Good morning, brave adventurers. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today I wanted to talk about a very particular book series that was released a long time ago in a galaxy, in a country far, far away from, from me, if you live in the US. But before I talk about that, I want to ask you, have you ever heard of Choose Your Own Adventure? Choose Your Own Adventure is a long running series of books aimed at children. A lot of them are by different authors, and each one is pretty much self-contained. The idea here is very simple. Based on your deepest desires, you select one of the books by their cover or their title, and you just start reading it like a normal book. However, at some point in the story, you will be presented with a choice. If you would like your main character that you're reading about to go outside and touch grass, turn to page 84 instead of the next page. But if you would like for them to instead go inside and make themselves a sandwich in the kitchen, turn to page 15. These branching paths would continue until your character inevitably met either one of many demises, or the one true good ending of the story, which would also give you the most amount of material to read out of the book in a single sitting. I don't actually consider these game books myself because the meaning of the word is gone on to, to mean so much more than simply making choices at different points in the story. But understanding what these books are is a great preface to introducing you to game books. Now there are a lot of different kinds of game books. Pretty much every series is unique in some way. Now, I have a bunch of examples of game books here in front of me today, one of which is Dragon Warriors. I did take this out of its packaging so that I could kind of flip through it, and I saw that this one in particular just wasn't for me. Uh, this is actually kind of an entire universe to be played with pen and paper. This small trade paperback book really is not that much different from uh, getting started with D&D core rulebook in that it introduces kind of the different races and classes and lands and how to play this standalone role-playing game. Nevertheless, I do have the other volumes. Maybe one day I'll crack it open and try to play that properly. The most well-known, I think, and most well-loved series of game books, the caliber of which I'm talking about, should be, and I think is, Lone Wolf uh, from Joe Dever and Gary Chalk. There are a lot of volumes of these, many different versions. This is the publication that I am currently trying to collect. Once you get up to about volume 14, things start getting pretty pricey, and the price only goes up. This would be the inside of this book, just to kind of exemplify what's going on here. There are different sections, and you're given choices in the story, just like you are in a choose-your-own-adventure book, and told to go to different sections rather than pages, because the sections can be so small that several can fit on a page. But there is more to it than just making those selections, which by the way can get pretty complex. We've got four selections there on one section when you get to a crossroads. There is also combat in this book, and the only thing you need to participate in the full experience that is Lone Wolf is yourself, a pencil, some paper, and a six-sided die. In the Lone Wolf series of books, you can actually select what skills you would like your character to have, and these skills will have a bearing on which choices you are allowed to make as you progress through each story. They are not self-contained. You should start from the first one and work your way through the adventures as Lone Wolf, the titular character, is the same character growing stronger and stronger with each adventure that you complete. Similar game book series include Nightmare, based on the thrilling TV series. This one looked really, really awesome. However, this one is a lot different than Lone Wolf. This one is actually this much novel, uh, standalone, just reading adventure, and then the game book portion just takes up these last maybe 40 pages, not even. There are riddles, and then there are different branching paths that you can take if you think you know the answer to the riddles. There are items that you can take, and then later on, if you have the item, a choice could present itself and giving you the opportunity to use that item. Probably right up there with Lone Wolf, but with a completely different dynamic, is Ian Livingstone's fighting fantasy series of novels. There are three completely different uh, publishings of this series, and the original one by Puffin is by far the most expensive and least accessible 
So that's why the reprints. Unfortunately, the re-releases of this book series, they don't include all of the books of the original Puffin release in order. Uh, one day I am going to be playing all of these game books right here on the channel. This one is Legend of Zagor. This is actually a recurring character. If you've ever heard of the Wizard of Firetop Mountain, that has its origin in a fighting fantasy book. It is typically volume one of any fighting fantasy line. Uh, it spawned a board game, a video game based on the board game, and Zagor here is actually a character from the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. I believe he is the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, so this is a popular character. Before I get to the meat of this video, or at least the sweet end, I want to show you something I'm very excited about. Fabled Lands is another game book series that's pretty contemporary. It's available on Amazon, and you can buy these books, and they'll, they'll be pretty new when you get your hands on them. They are also by Dave Morris. These are distinctive. Instead of being a linear adventure across many books like Lone Wolf or a self-contained adventure per book, these do start with a volume one, but then there are places that you can go that will transport you to the other books. So essentially you have like seven books and each one is kind of based after a region. And if you make it to, say, the port city and you want to take a ship to another book, it will say, you may now go to this section of the other book and start there. So if you don't have the book, you can't take the ship because you just don't have that option to continue your adventure in that way. But you can go back and forth between the various books and go claim new weapons, armor, code words and the like and revisit old areas. This is an awesome, genius concept, and it's something I can't wait to start playing. I'm going to play it right here on the channel. But in here is the surprise. Did you know, and if you follow Home of HeroQuest fans over on Twitch, shameless plug once again for my buddy Corgan, you would know that there were a series of HeroQuest novels. Uh, actually, the title of this video is probably going to spoil that, but <laughs> there were three of them. They are not accessible. They are expensive. They're a bit tough to track down in decent condition uh, and they were only published in the UK by Corgi but I've got them and we will be playing these on the channel as well uh, the first one is called the fellowship of four it uses the art from the hero quest game system box has the tagline based on the best-selling fantasy board game and the back reads centuries ago the evil Kyrax was bound by wizardry under the mountains of the frozen north now his acolytes are on the brink of freeing Kyrax releasing his demonic power into the world again Four adventurers, the young wizard Fortunato, the elf Aeldonus, the mighty barbarian Asgrim, and Anvil the dwarf are drawn together on a quest to thwart the Acolyte's plans, a quest to ensure that the terrible power of Kyrax cannot again sweep the land. But will their skills be equal to those of the famed heroes of ages past? Anything less and chaos will prevail. So these books are even more different in that instead of being a linear progression or standalone well they they are standalone these three books can be done in any order they don't necessarily carry anything from one book over to the other this however is the portion of the book that is game so this is the choose your own adventure side of the book there is combat and it is very hero quest i mean it is very hero quest themed the characters are hero quest the setting is hero quest this is as close to official as you can get in book form for the franchise. This particular adventure is called In the Night Season because The Fellowship of Four is the novel portion of the book and it takes up this space. The game portion of the book has a character sheet for you to fill out and you can play this as long as you've got a pencil and dice. Now, the other two game books in this series have a unique feature about them. They actually come with Hero Quest quests. That's right. The Screaming Specter by Dave Morris, which is also Hero Quest Volume 2, comes with not only a novel, but the game book portion and a quest that you can actually use with your Hero Quest board game. And finally, The Tyrant's Tomb, also by Dave Morris. It is Volume 3 in the set, and the last volume follows this convention. It has a great story. I actually just finished reading this one. I really loved the story in this one, and it is followed by a Choose Your Own Adventure as well as a standalone single quest for Hero Quest. And they're replete with artifacts and mechanics that you don't find in the base game. So I know the question inevitably will be, will Avalon Hill pick up on these? And I think 
the answer is pretty vague. Uh, Hero Quest belongs to Avalon Hill. It is their property now. They have it. Uh, so these things being Hero Quest might fall under that umbrella unless there were different sorts of deals because the publishing deal for these would have went to Corgi, not Chaosium, not Games Workshop for the books. So Corgi no longer has the rights to publish these, I would imagine. We would never see these books in circulation again, but I'm not sure that the properties aren't unrelicensable. I would guess, however, that they are, but that's because I'm the type of person who tempers their own expectations. I don't think we'll ever see these in re-release format, but it does not stop anyone over at Avalon Hill or aspiring writers from getting in touch with Avalon Hill and producing written works of their own, not based on these three, but on the newer HeroQuest game system. That's it. I just wanted to talk about game books and these fascinating HeroQuest game books that are pretty tough to acquire unless you can throw money at eBay, unfortunately, like so many other HeroQuest things. And maybe if there's enough interest, Avalon Hill might take notice of that sort of thing. So maybe maybe you'd like to sound off in the comments below if you'd like to see something like this out in the wild in a contemporary context. That's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great, fantastic rest of your day. Bye for now.